Dire Team Ban. What's up, guys, and welcome finally to the Pro Dota 2 National Cup. Here on the Pro Dota English channel, we're going to have a best of two between Team Russia and Team Kazakhstan. And credit to these captains, the teams, whatever, they actually tagged up. They actually made a real team for this. It's not that much trouble, so yeah, it's a lot easier for us that way. I'm Mike Thor, he's going to be joined by MRP for this game. Hopefully, everyone's going to load in and stay in, right? Yeah, screen. Uh, looks like he just reconnected, so things looking good. Indeed, uh, their countries would be proud looking at them making tags, eh? How lovely is that? Don't even have to put up flags beside their name in the game, but yeah, it should be uh, should be a pretty good one. I feel like Kazakhstan's a little bit undervalued, um, but in order or uh, by virtue of that public opinion, but uh, Russia certainly very strong, only with one tie thus far, so uh, today's going to mean a lot for them, and they still have another series coming after this one. Yeah, they've yet to play against Denmark, who have not mm -hmm. won any games yet. So, mm -hmm. pretty sure Russia are feeling pretty good about that one. At least getting one point, maybe even getting the three. But, uh, as you said, Russia have only played one game so far. They have two more left. And this is Kazakhstan's last chance to get any points. Right. Again, one win is one point. Two wins Seconds is three points. Remaining. So, obviously, you want to win more. Go figure, right? But uh, we have a draft going on. We have a lot of the point-click silences being taken out, but you know, Queen of Pain, Shadow Fiend, Winter Wyvern, all pretty powerful picks. And for Team Russia, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a tusk here. I'm like 90% on that. Mm -hmm. Indeed it will. Uh, fits the team and the country and even the region very well. So no surprise to see that come out early on in that first phase. Yeah, two or four uh, very strong heroes, two for each side here. So really no surprises. Um, interesting to see that Night Stalker band come out a little bit early. Uh, we'll see. I mean, when, Wyvern is not the greatest versus the NS. Usually he can, uh, she becomes food for him around that second night time. So it's understandable, but it's def it definitely feels like there's a plan going forward for Kazakhstan and that Night Stalker throws a wrench into that a little bit. A Dark Seer band coming out in the surprise. I owe perhaps a little bit more, uh, but Kazakhstan and Russia are both pretty comfortable with this opening. Yeah, we've been seeing uh, some teams heavily prioritize that IO, and uh, some teams not. Uh, more nowadays, you kind of need to have an IO player, because just being able to force out an early ban like this is value in and of itself, but uh, mm -hmm. there are so many powerful heroes right now, and IO Tiny or IO Anyone is just a very solid fallback, and really always has been, at least uh, in the past couple of patches since IO has been introduced, but... Uh, yeah, let's take a look at the next bands now. Dazzle, the Broodmother. There's still lots of powerful heroes in the pool right now. Uh, for Kazakhstan, maybe liking someone like a Shaker, Shadow Fiend, uh, would like the help. Shaker, even like dedicated towards that offlane, slash, if the offlane's too hard, go help the Shadow Fiend. Uh, liking that route kind of for Kazakhstan, but they're going to take out the Ember Spirit, and well, Candle is already out, so it seems like everyone's kind of on the same page with these uh, powerful heroes. Mm hmm. Would I be too surprised to see an alchemist despite the Shadow Fiend already picked up uh, for Kazakhstan here? Um, any illusion based hero wouldn't be too surprising with the Ember Spirit ban coming out. A PL ban coming before that, so perhaps an anticipatory one uh, from Russia, uh, in, according to Kazakhstan's playstyle. But uh, it seems Russia are a bit maybe worried about being single target heavy, uh, perhaps wanting to put this Tusk in a core role. Uh, any team that screen is on, generally, uh, you will see Tusk in a core role. But they do play it in the four as well. So we'll see what direction they end up going with that. PL ban always still kind of interesting to me in 685. I don't feel like he's very strong. I don't even feel like he was very strong in 684. Uh, so, yeah, it's interesting to see that come out. But we'll see where Kazakhstan go and if they end up picking their one position up here. I think in general I'd be a little bit more afraid of Anti-Mage. He like, right. maybe doesn't have the burst like a Phantom Lancer, but he's a lot more consistent, I feel. And even if he takes a stun, like with that magic shield, it's just so hard to kill him off. Yeah, I'm yeah. interested to see where this Tusk is going to go also for Team Russia. Like, Screen is known for his Tusk, but Afterlife mm -hmm. also plays Tusk a hell of a lot in the offlane. But hey, at least they have some flexibility, right? They can choose to either give it a little bit of a more core role in that offlane or choose to give him a more supporty role. That will really depend on what secondary support they grab. 
or what supports they grab to see how well they partner up with the Tusk. Uh, Dazzle would have been probably at the top of that list, but for Five Team Kazakhstan, not going to be that shaker. It's going to be a little bit more of a heavy hitter in the Ogre Magi. Ogre Magi Winter Wyvern, kind of a kind of a mixed bag of aggression there, but uh, really when you have Ogre Magi, if he is going for Boots first or Orb of Venom first, you know, one of those more aggressive builds with Ignite that pretty much no matter what your other supporting hero has... What, no matter what he is, uh, you're probably going to be doing some pretty serious damage, especially if it's someone soft Radiant like a Skyrath Mage. Pick. Yeah, indeed. Uh, really interesting to see the Skyrath Mage come out this early. I mean, he offers some nice poke. Uh, perhaps they throw him towards the mid lane now, not worried about an Earthshaker being there, but Ogre can trade really reliably. Uh, of course, Skyrath is a little bit more effective versus the Ogre, being that he's mostly magic damage early on, but his right clicks are going to completely tickle. Arctic Burn, Ignite early on, certainly nothing to scoff at. And so they do have some poke, but yeah, as you mentioned, Wyvern, certainly not the most uh, intimidating lane presence early on. So alongside the Ogre Magi, it does seem like there's a little bit of a discrepancy in theme there, but uh, certainly nice to help with the farm as well, the Bloodlust later on. Ogre Magi overall, just a pretty strong support, and... Don't feel like he's been appreciated as much as he should be uh, in this patch thus far. So um, do like the pickup from Kazakhstan. Skyrath Mage, Tusk, certainly a potent combo. Um, snowball into Ancient Seal Mystic Flare is pretty good. Uh, but I think that they're going to go with another support for Team Russia here uh, and put the Tusk in an offlane. We'll see how it ends. It's going to be a clockwork pick here for Kazakhstan. And then the same configuration. Huskar for Russia. Radiant Kazakhstan team. are... Not super well equipped to deal with the Huskar right now, but it's, they have yet to pick up their their uh, their last hero, so they still can prepare mm -hmm. for this Huskar. Have a response to this Huskar down the line, but I first of all like the Clockwork pick. The Clockwork Scarf Mage combo is something that yeah. is of course very threatening. The Tusk has some defensive power versus the Clockwork, and even Scarf Mage versus Clockwork Five is generally pretty remaining. decent for the Scarf Mage unless he's the one to get hit with the hook shot and like doesn't have any mana or something like that. But Kazakhstan now have the or I mean before the Huskar pick had the ability to go for pretty much any given carry hero and they would have had a lot of support to get that hero just farmed up in the background like Spectre, Anti-Mage, really whatever it is. Now they know that they're up against a Huskar so they know that whatever their carry hero selection is going to be it has to be someone who has a hell of a lot of physical damage. Oftentimes the response is going to be a Wind Ranger if you're looking for a mid laner which I suppose can still be possible here for Team Kazakhstan. We've seen teams go deep and try to grab an Ursa to deal with this Huskar which is I think not a terrible option this game. Uh, but Russia, grabbing Huskar fourth is yeah. pretty ballsy. It's never really something I'm a huge fan of because he's very easily hard countered. But mm -hmm. hey, it's a Huskar, and he can just take this game by himself. I still love the Alchemist pick here for Kazakhstan if they put it in the safe lane. Um, early Solar Crest does wonders against Huskar. You can get that up at about eight and a half minutes in a safe lane Alchemist game. So and that could be really detrimental. Adds to the Shadow Fiend's toolkit as well on top of that presence of the Dark Lord. Spectre, as you mentioned, also a good one there with the pure damage from Desolate. Um, and uh, yeah, on top of that, kind of your standard carries. They will ban out the Alchemist, will Russia. So uh, interesting one. Slaughter was there as well, but Kazakhstan actually banning that out for themselves. I, I do think the Huskar can work here. Ursa certainly... Uh, has a good time in this one, I feel. There's really not enough disable, and kind of that's his biggest weakness is his ability to be kited. Yeah, inconvenient matchup versus the Queen of Pain and the Tusk, but with Ogre Magi and Clockwork, you will probably have enough to at least, you know, drop them very low and force them to leave the fight, snowball, blink out, or in some capacity. So, uh, yeah, for Ursa, Ursa seems like a pretty decent hero here. But for Russia, this is really where the Tusk gets like extra value, the fact that he can still be an offlane hero or a supporting hero. And I think they will probably hold on to that because, again, Screen and Afterlife both play a hell of a lot of Tusk. Uh, they really have the luxury of seeing what the entirety Kazakhstan draft is before they decide where this Tusk is actually going to be played. Uh, right now, I don't think it's particularly you know, significantly stronger going one way or the other, but... I'm pretty sure in 15 seconds, Team Rush will have a pretty good idea of where this Tusk is going. Hmm. <laughs> not bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, not a huge fan, but it combos up with the Clockwork and the Ogre well. Uh, the Winter's Curse also helps out. Uh, so, And it's pretty good against the Razor, uh, especially with the Ultimate. So, yeah, I don't, I don't mind this pickup. Um, we mentioned a little bit earlier on in the draft that they are... Russia seemed to be a little worried about being single target heavy, and certainly Razor 
is a way to mitigate that or a way to deal with that uh, type of lineup. So yeah, I don't mind this pickup. I feel like they don't scale extremely well with it, but as it stands, Russia doesn't really scale entirely better. So we'll see what the, the final response is from them. Well, Razor just at least versus the Huskar, which is the matchup that Kazakhstan actually are going to be looking for, is pretty decent for the Razor. The Burning Spears will still do full damage, even if you aren't actually hitting for anything. Razor stolen all your damage, but if you do manage to link up the Huskar, the odds of him being able to kill off the Razor in no time flat are very low. But then we have an Omni Knight for Team Russia. You know, I really shouldn't be surprised to see another melee support hero picked up with screen. <laughs> I feel like it's every single game where. He's going to be playing a melee support hero, no exceptions. If it's not Tusk, it's probably Night Stalker. Uh, I think I've seen him play like a Silencer once, but that's about it. But okay, apparently we have to remake. But uh, yeah, yes. Omni Knight with the Huskar is a pretty broken combo and a pure damage nuke of Purify. After you jump into like one of these tanker heroes like Razor or Magi, is actually pretty insane. Yeah, indeed. Uh, screen's disconnected three times, so maybe he's having issues with the server, but no one's disconnected yet, so... <laughs> it was also, uh, I think, Afterlife drafting? I don't know if it, yeah, like, it was. It defaults. was. Because usually screen's going to be drafting. Yes. That's from what I've seen in all the teams that he's been in. I don't know if he, like, constantly disconnected, like, switches drafters. That would make too just, much sense, probably, for Valve. Seems like he was just like, dude, we picked Omni Knight Remake. <laughs> I don't know who Omni Knight is right next to, but uh, <laughs> just a simple misclick. Um, how do they deal with this Omni Knight? I mean, no natural Diffusal Blade Builders, no Rubik, nothing really to dispel any of his toolkit. So I feel like the pick could work out. Huskar plus Purification is always really nice as well. Life Break into Purification, pretty good. Um, doesn't really help their roam out at all though so perhaps the laning stage is really kind of the pivotal moment or pivotal stage of this one if russia can get through the laning stage with i mean yeah if they can get through the laning stage with a a, a good scenario for their cores i feel like they should translate into a pretty good mid game for them mm -hmm. like i think it is going to come down to probably a heavy roam from the tusk and the skyrath mage uh, they can just put the Huskar in the offlane expecting a lot of help from the Tusk and if you are able to snowball in kind of like a budget life break alternatively if you're going to have the Omni Knight well in involved with the Tusk and the Skyrath Mage then you could just snowball in have a whole bunch of heroes there and just instantly purify for a huge nuke uh yeah the lanes might be a little bit rough here for the Team Russia side specifically where this Huskar is going to go and where this Omni Knight is going to go we have seen Omni Knights just go to the offlane and uh, maybe solo, maybe dual lane capacity and have a very mediocre time as you would probably expect from any melee hero going to an offlane. It's not Dark Zero Clockwork. But uh, I feel like pretty much across the board, the Kazakhstan lanes are going to be slightly stronger, but the Russian lanes are going to be a lot more explosive and a lot more, uh, you know, they, they can do a lot more. There's a lot more uh, ceiling there. Yeah, certainly going to be. It can be interesting to see if they do abandon that lane a little bit earlier than uh, is natural with the Tusk and get him roaming around. And there's certainly some susceptible heroes on the Radiant side. So we're actually going to have a remake now. It seems like that's the case. Man, I thought I was pretty lucky that I loaded into this one to start out. I now <laughs> have to try again. Oh, yeah, we're man. really Here we our go. Luck. Let's roll the dice. Guys, we're going to be right back in for game one between Team Russia and Team Kazakhstan in just a little bit. Don't go anywhere. Hopefully Reborn is going to cooperate. Holy crap, guys. I what? We might actually get to play this game. <laughs> what, what, what? I know, right? I I'm Total like cute. half expecting Axma to disconnect again. He's actually going to be playing the Omni Knight. So we have a, a player swap. In, uh, Undershock out, Ax uh, Axmo in. Oh, no, uh, after. Wait, is Afterlife still here? Yeah, yeah who is out? Be. Someone no, left. Ax oh, Met yeah. Initially, uh, Axmo's been here for a while, but initially yeah. there was someone else in his place. I have no idea. But either way, uh, yeah, we're back. Had a couple of server issues or something. You know, only casually starting 56 minutes late. 
more or less par for the course. But here we go. It's going to be the game for real. On the Team Kazakhstan team side, team we have Stalkat who's going to be playing the Clockwork down the bottom lane. We got SB on the Shadow Fiend. Mantis is on the Razor. Lucky is on the Ogre Magi. How fitting because, well, Ogre Magi. And then Amazing is going to be on the Winter Wyvern. <laughs> Over on the side of Russia, we've got Screen. And their captain, fearless captain, on his signature tusk. Afterlife going to be picking up the Huskar under shock on the Queen of Pain. That can leave Metrum on the Skyrath Mage. And finally, a lovely Axmo on the Omni Knight. Beaten away at the Cog's bottom. We'll see if he gets this bounty rune. And it's going to go over to the Clockwork. But meanwhile, First Blood spilled top lane. And that's going to go the way of the Wyver. Yeah, they collapsed a little bit too quickly on the uh, Huskar. And Huskar, as much damage as he does, is not a super... Uh, super tanky hero at level 1. Doesn't actually do a lot of damage level 1 either. 47 base damage is rather low. Uh, I mean, it's uh, vastly <laughs> overshadowed by the Ogre Magi at the very least. And he just got a little bit too close to the Ogre. Tried to throw spears at the Ogre Magi. That doesn't really work. The dude has a million regen with two mangoes and eight mm. armor. So yeah, uh, Huskar just getting caught a little bit too far out. And you know, Team Kazakhstan draw a very easy first blood. That being said, uh, again, these lanes are potentially very explosive for Team Russia even after having dropped a kill. So, you know, a, a kill for Kazakhstan is not going to mean that they are going to lock down all these lanes. But it does look like it's going to be next to impossible for the Huskar Tusk dual lane to do anything up against these three heroes. Yeah, I love this laning configuration coming out from the Radiant side. Uh, Kazakhstan definitely looking to expose a weakness here in the lineup that they're a little bit melee heavy early on, as you alluded to in the draft. And uh, not only that, but that. Huskar really looks to shine in one versus one matchups, and uh, when you have the numbers advantage early on, at least before he gets up uh, a few levels in that Berserker's blood, it definitely bodes well for you. So I really like what they're doing thus far. Uh, they're going to rely a little bit on uh, stacking up for SB here in the mid lane, as Metrum has been pretty present thus far, and they will even force him back into the trees now. And he's almost out of regen, but he's only three gold away from that bottle, so he'll be okay to recover. Uh, hereafter, but for now, Metrum making his life a living hell in this mid lane. Yeah, so recovery for Shadow Fiend possible if you shut down the Huskar in a similar fashion. It's really not possible. They're gonna throw a couple spears towards Lucky. Shard's gonna block him off, but again, they just don't have enough damage to cut through this ogre. Especially with Amazing shoving everyone back with that uh, burn, but now they're onto Amazing. Now, this guy is a viable target, especially with Metrum coming in. They're gonna start dra draining the damage out from Afterlife, and with one more Whip Slash, he'll drop. Amazing's still surviving because of the Embrace screen. Looking to cut him off. But I don't think he has enough damage to do this because Mantis has stolen 28 and he's gonna, just going to go to work on screen. He'll fail to kill off the Winter Wyvern. And it'll be two for one up on the top lane as in the mid lane, Shadow Fiend got jumped by Undershock. So I guess that's kind of nice for Team Russia, the fact that mid lane is yeah. getting uh, absolutely raffle stomped. But again, Shadow Fiend can't recover and a Huskar who's behind is going to stay behind. Indeed, and it's uh, certainly worrisome. So the question is, if the Omni Knight was present rather than the Tusk, does that go as poorly uh, for Team Russia? It's a little odd to, to me uh, to put see them put that Omni Knight in the core role. I mean, early repel, uh, or early levels in repel as well uh, as the Guardian Angel can do a lot of work in this matchup as we talked about them having not much to dispel either of those, but still, I feel like maybe the Omni Knight's a little bit better in this lane, especially alongside a Huskar. I mean, it's kind of the problem of Team Russia that they have an aggressive lane setup right here. Again, with Huskar and Tusk, you kind of want to be fighting 24-7 up against your lane opponents, but the lane opponents are just so much better at fighting right now. They have three mangoes here, and that's just like a lot of base regen to work against, so struggle for afterlife for sure. And Ogre Magi, Razor, at level 1, they're good to go. That's what Ogre Magi wants to do almost every single game, especially with this item loadout. Mantis wants to fight up against the Huskar as well, whereas... For the Tusk, yeah, he is a pretty powerful hero at early levels, but not if you're going into super tanky opponents. We saw how much damage they were able to do into the Winter Wyvern. That's really the only possible kill up on this mm -hmm. top lane, but as long as Amazing keeps his distance, as long as he is a little bit patient with his stick charges and with his embrace, he should not be dying anytime soon. They have to continue dominating this mid lane, but the problem is that bottom lane is absolutely getting stomped going the other way. Axmo 7-0 versus the Stalkat 17 and 10 clockwork up towards top lane. Lucky, we dropped a little bit low, but they're going to snowball in towards mid lane instead. SB is going to fall. Again, this is what Team Russia need to be doing. They need to get Undershock super far ahead and hope that he's able to almost win the game by himself or at least lock down the game long enough so that the Huskar and Omni can start recovering. Wondering why Amazing doesn't cancel his TP towards the mid lane there. Now he's left the top lane a little bit vulnerable. 
for Team Kazakhstan. Lucky, not the most ideal target for screen to jump in on. Perhaps waiting for Mantis. It doesn't have a level in that unstable current, but he's going to catch a Fire Blast as he walks uphill. Ignite is there as well, but the four hero rotation could be pretty detrimental. They bring down the Ogre Magi, but Mantis turning this. He gets one kill. He's going to get a second here. No, the right click is just shy of bringing down Undershot for the third. But the Husker goes down, now rotations in. Splinter Blast, one more right click, and the Cold Embrace to ensure Mantis is still alive. Double kill going his way. And the Razor looking, as you mentioned, very strong early on. And this is the remaining advantage. Is bottom lane, Axmo. Oof, Stallcat ran out of battery assault, so didn't really want to tense fate up against a level 3 purification. But uh, is still dominating this lane. Now that the Queen of Pain has died, not all of the advantage is lost for this co-op in mid lane, but it is definitely mitigated as Razor's continuously surviving. Not only that, but he's getting so many kills. He's involved in every single kill thus far. 3-0 yeah. and 3. He's going to go for power treads. Honestly, he can go for you know as fast or as slow of a build as he wants right now, simply because he's getting so much gold. I want to see the Ring of Aquila. Hell, I would have even like to see drums in this situation, just so that they can continuously apply this pressure. They have all three lanes. Now... Maybe not decisively one, but one enough to be comfortable. And for Team Russia yeah. to reach that explosive state where their heroes like Huskar and Queen of Pain can just go off, it's going to be a lot more difficult. They're going to catch Scream with the Fire Blast and Ignite. Arctic Burn is there. This Tusk, not super tanky. He's going to turn around for some shards. Lucky, though, right on his tail. One Ray is going to miss. Arctic Burn going to fade. Now he's going to turn around for a Snowball. Onto Lucky because he has a Skyrath Mage coming in. Screen. Oh, he's going to get away barely. Undershot's going to grab that kill. Now with a Sonic Wave to throw towards Amazing if needed. Afterlife also going to cut this bird off. And Winter Wyvern will definitely die here to the blink scream of Undershock. Two for zero now for Team Russia. That is a much tesla needed trade, but Hookshot in onto Metrum. This Skyrath Mage is going to seal Stallcat, but he's not going to stand a chance here. Undershock is going to arrive with Axmo in tow with the Haste Not that. They're going to catch up to SP with the D-Gen or a blink for it. Undershock's going to grab a double kill. Afterlife still kind of wants to go in, but with no life break, it's really difficult for him to do so. 7-6 now is it's another one-for-one one trade, but trading the Shadow Fiend again away from Team KZ and only gaining a support tusk out of the deal. Again, these are that one's not a trade that they want to be making, but uh, now after those kill trades, that vastly favored Team Russia. Yeah. Game's a little bit more even. Yeah, it seems like Kazakhstan are kind of playing into the CIS hand here. They get aggressive across the map, they rotate over four heroes, and the response is too few and too late from Kazakhstan. I feel like they need to just get back to this top lane, continue to pressure the safe lane tower, continue to pressure the Huskar, and save TPs for any rotations on their mid lane. I mean, uh, meeting up in the river one at a time, trickling in, feeding over your heroes is definitely not going to help your cause. And early game, they were doing very well. I sure they want to get the clockwork involved early on, but uh, after you see three heroes there, just because screen rotates back with low health doesn't mean you should be jumping in deep into their side of the map just for a Skywrath mage. Now we're going to have a little bit of a lane swap. It is going to be that uh, try lane that I think we kind of both expected with Omni Knight joining the Huskar Tusk solo lane. Mm -hmm. Except this time screen's up against a huge freaking Razor. So, you know, he can't really do much here. He can't even get close to his tower, really, without being at a substantial amount of risk. Sooner or later, this top lane tower is going to fall. I mean, no one from Team Rush is going to defend it. I don't think they can defend it. They have to try to make trades elsewhere. They're going to jump towards Stallcat, try to look for that trade. Bolts are flying. They need to get close enough for the D-Gen aura. This six Flame Spears, though, should burn him down. It will. Yeah. Clockwork is going to roast in his armor, and Huskar is going to get a very nice kill in the bottom lane. He's still going to gun straight for that armlet, as Huskars normally do, but uh, that is a pretty big kill. Clockwork has had such a great time versus the Omni Knight, now a little bit rougher after that death. Yeah, if they clicked on the hero's bot lane, they'll realize there's only two TPs right now on the dire side. One of them going to be expended, and I expect them They're to be pressuring to this amazing. Thing. Undershock has repel on him and a DD rune. Damage stolen from screen, but Sonic Wave doesn't care about that. Undershock is completely out of mana, but he does have stick charges. Amazing going to try to hide in the trees. Shard's going to see him. One more right click. Oh, the scream is going to be launched, but it's not going to be in time. Which Wyvern teleported into the fountain. If he botched that one, teleported to a tower or something like that, maybe the scream would have fallen into his death. But still, it's going to be a big kill on the Razor now. Team Russia are getting Undershock involved in these kills. And again, this is exactly what they need to do. The fact that they have a double damage rune certainly doesn't hurt. As long as Undershock is getting farm, he can buy space so that everyone else can get farm as well. Yeah, they've picked up the Aquila on their Shadowfiend mid lane in the meantime. But yeah, I was hoping that they would continue to pressure that top lane. And it was a very timely reaction from Russia. And able to set it up with the Tusk as well. Undershock coming through with that first ultimate. Making... It paid dividends for his squad. So yeah, things looking very good 
uh, compared to three or four minutes ago now for Russia. It gives Afterlife a bit of space in the bot lane as well. Uh, that all was occurring. And now he'll return up to top, not too far off that arm lake and pick up that close of haste from the side shot. That's a big item to pick up for the Huskar. There's no Ancient Apparition or Doom on the other end, so we can freely arm the toggle. There's a good amount of physical damage coming out from you know, the Shadow Fiend with maxed out souls, even though he has been dying, still does a lot of right-click damage. Same thing for Razor, who's just going to be doing so much physical damage over the course of these fights. So it's nice for the Huskar for sure, and there's no hard counter, but still it's not going to be him completely safe. They are going to rotate, however, onto this Razor, who is going to see Screen wrapping around from behind, However, can he get out in time? There's Axmo coming up from the north. Screen is going to start losing his damage and is going to snowball away. So he doesn't want any part of that. But there's also Undershock right around the corner who's currently hidden to this Radiant Observer Ward. They can still go for this if they find a decent angle. It's going to be kind of difficult though because Lucky's here. Screen going to drop super low already. And Axmo really doesn't want to use his Purify just to heal. He wants to use that as damage. And the hero coming in, it's actually going to be a short jump in for Undershock. It is the TP spotted, however, by the Observer Ward, I think. Uh, it might not have been, but either way, they don't know the Queen of Pain is here in Viz. Oh, this is so dangerous right now, especially for Amazing. He's not in a great spot. But everyone's spotted right now. The Dire Observer Ward now kicking into gear. Yeah, uh, they're playing fairly safe, though. I don't know that Russia is really keen to jump this and it, it seems like that's not the case as screen has rotated around towards that mid lane top, top low yeah they're gonna find with the ancient seal uh, the stall cat clockwork and he'll be brought down pretty easily mantis may be able to turn this though even though with it he does not have the alt will be able to bring down the huskar and at this point not too bad for kazakhstan yeah, but for Team Russia, losing the Huskar at this point, who's still a little bit behind, is not the end of the world either. Uh, the clockwork is not worth quite as much as the Omnite has been recovering really well now, 102, and starting to get some farm. Uh, not really the super deep trades that Russia wants to be making, but hey, they have another opportunity to make a good trade on their end as they're looking for SB, the super soft Shadow Fiend. He has power tread strength, and he's going to put a lot of damage to Undershock, but Undershock going to turn around with Sonic Wave available, drop its screen pain, not quite enough, they need one more hit, and she will get it, blink away afterwards, narrowly dodging that Requiem, but here comes Stallcat's hook shot. It's just in range, he has a good idea of where Undershock is, but he wants to go for screen instead. That's the much easier kill, however, less worth it for him to get that. Metrum's going to come in for, well... Poking, I guess, but that's about it. One for one trade, another great trade for the Team Russia side. Yeah, certainly so. Unfortunately, um, Stallcat having to go for the low hanging fruit there. Uh, meanwhile, on the other side of the map, they do bring down the Ogre. So, overall, trades across the map, they get the safety lane tier one as well. And Russia recovered super nice from that uh, aggressive tri lane top lane, which didn't go extremely well. Mantis is going to go for this kind of stat early build. So, he's going to be trying to pressure here early on and. I don't mind the build at all, but they are going to need desperately this mechanism on SB to start balling up and y utilizing that item build. So it's going to be it's going to be rough going. I feel for the SB, they don't really have too much in the way of stacks prepared for him. Just a double stack in the large camp. Yeah, just not good enough at this stage. It just seems like Team Russia are finding more heroes in the right places. Their rotations are just a little bit better, and they're ca constantly catching Team Kazakhstan off guard. In between these uh, these pickoffs, Kazakhstan are getting a good amount of farm, but there might be another one. A Stallcat is going to get jumped by a very pissed off Huskar. Here comes the Life Break. Here comes the Snowball, if it's even needed. Walrus Punch is there, but he'll die to the Spears, if nothing else. Again, it's just another easy rotation in for Team Russia. They walk in, get a kill, and are able to you know do whatever they want afterwards, whether that's freely walk out or go for a push. It, really doesn't matter too much. They're slowing down Team Kazakhstan enough, yeah. and as long as they're playing around Mantis in that they're avoiding mm. this this Razor like the Plague, they'll be fine. Speaking of avoiding the Razor, they're going to go for the Shadow Fiend again. This time, Snowball into Mystic Flare. He's sitting right in it. He's sealed up as well. Skyrath Mage and Screen, the two supports, taking down the solo mid Shadow Fiend. They need Mantis to get into every single one of these fights, but he's just not getting involved in enough because Team Russia are just not going for him. They're going to find Amazing and Lucky with Undershock leaving the fray. Purify is going to destroy Amazing's health pool. He's going to drop the curse, which is going to save him a little bit of time. After that, in the meantime, getting GA'd, so he's going to be able to dive towards Mantis, just stacking up that fire. Amazing, in the meantime, drop by Undershock, screaming with Sonic Wave available. Mantis is going to clip by that and will give Undershock a double kill. Team Russia are just out fighting Team Kazakhstan so so yeah. easily and now they're gonna get objectives it looked good for Kazakhstan it really really did but now it's looking a lot lot worse yeah I mean Mantis kind of isolated himself in the trees there but we touched upon it before they really don't have any way to deal with this GA uh, and the repel so after like feeling very ballsy there was able to just walk up into the Huskar's face stack up those searing arrows and feel pretty safe altogether. Stalkat has the hookshot prepared at the high ground 
And there's more than enough mana on Undershock for him to get out. Omni Knight lacking a bit, but they put the Repel onto the Huskar. Just leave him as the Battering Ram. He'll take down that mid lane tier 1. Stallcat not looking to re-engage just yet as Mantis just TPing into the tier 2s. Not close enough to close the gap there and enjoying the fray. So things looking very good for Team Russia. The movement has been better, and as you mentioned, uh, they really just kind of staying out of the periphery of this Razor's aggression. As long as they can either have Guardian Angel available, or if they don't have that, keep the Huskar away from the Razor, then these fights should be progressing kind of as per normal. Again, Team Russia do have a decent amount of disengage, at least with Screen, with uh, Undershock, and, well, Undershock's the one who needs to be disengaging. Oh my god, just buys 3,000 gold worth of items. Okay, I was gonna say, Queen of Pain, your item build is looking really bad for how much net worth you have, but there's the item right there. Aghanim Scepter, 15 minutes in, with Power Treads Bottle and Magic Wand. This is an extremely farmed Queen of Pain, and the sooner you get Sonic Wave, obviously the better it is, the more it hurts, but this is something that might catch Team Kazakhstan off guard. They will destroy the Tier 1 tower, and that's a really good pickup for them, because at this point, again, they need to get as much gold as they can. However, here comes reinforcements. Afterlife's gonna charge right in towards SB. Cog's gonna, or Shard's gonna push him out, but it doesn't matter. He'll burn anyway. Definitely been doing some serious damage. Now Screen taking some damage from Afterlife. Screen may die here, but Afterlife is gonna turn and just fight it out. Axel coming in with the heal. They'll burn down Amazing with help of dump, double damage. Undershock, somehow he's gotten Another one. Stalkat's gonna hook shot in, kill off Metrum. Afterlife gonna life break out, still taking so much physical damage from the Razor and will fall. But now it's Undershock and Axmo versus two. Mantis is gonna try to go for the curry, will fall short there as Axmo does mech up. Mantis caught in the D gen, is gonna get blunked bomb by Undershock with a double kill. Dagger onto Stalkat, still the DD, Queen of Pain doing so much work. Triple kill for Undershock. Man, if he doesn't have a double damage rune there, I'm pretty sure they have to either retreat or they lose a whole lot more. But double damage Undershock, that's like the third one. Yeah, I mean, without GA there, without the double damage rune, uh, of course they didn't have GA, but without the double damage rune, they lose that fight, I think, pretty handily. Uh, especially considering that the Winter's Curse seemed to be, I'm not sure if it was on cooldown, but a little bit late uh, coming out from Amazing. He may have just been slightly out of range, and if so, he probably would have allowed SB to get that Requiem off after the Snowball, but it happened after the Shadow Fiend's death, and so obviously they lose a lot of damage and damage reduction uh, by virtue of that death early so uh, i feel like that could have gone even better for kazakhstan and is a little bit overzealous from russia to jump in without uh, their omni knights ultimate but either way yeah still goes pretty favorable for them and exactly the hero that you want to keep snowballing uh, gets those kills so nine one and four already on undershock now they're gonna go right into the roche pit start the stacking of those spears and for team kazakhstan they have the hook shot at the ready. They do not have a curse, but this is where Razor really would like to fight in theory. If he could actually get in here in time, it doesn't look like that's really going to be happening. Afterlife is super low at this point, just surfing at the minimum armlet amount. But with so many spears in the Roshan, so much damage over time. Amazing to get blinked upon. We got a little bit too far out. Got cost the concussion. Now silence. Sonic Wave. Mystic Flare shards. You know, just in case he was still alive for whatever reason, but he's long dead. Undershock has a regen rune, so it doesn't really cost him anything, and now Huskar has a double life. This has got to be super unsettling for Team Kazakhstan. Like, you, they should know that their lanes, especially top lane, was going as good as it could have gone. Like, that was a decisively one lane. Mm -hmm. But now here they are, eight kills behind, and how much gold behind? Well, 7,500 in gold and experience behind. Like, just the mental toll of that they threw away their lead has got to be hurting them. Yeah, there's a full set of Greaves on their Omni Knight. He has more net worth than the Shadow Fiend right now. If that's not cause for concern, I really don't know what is. He's only got an Ogre Club up on SB, and he hasn't really been able to even get r r Shadow Raise combos off in these fights. I mean, some in the early pickoffs, but he has been a complete absence in these team fights. Bot lane, they're gonna TP in three. Lucky's gonna be caught with the concussive shot. Mantis will be able to TP out into the east, but Lucky will not be so lucky. Sonic Wave, even used there. Uh, Axmo will find the kill regardless on the Omni Knight. Undershock not too worried about expending that with that low cooldown. And Afterlife will be able to back himself out to safety. So overall clean pick for Team Russia. And they're able to deny that tower bot lane as well. By the way, there's uh, 800 pure damage in an AoE nuke available here for Team Russia with the Sonic Wave. Still only level 2 and a Purify. So yeah, um, I mean it's not enough to insta-kill people. But still, it's AoE pure damage that's more than half of any, or I guess slightly less than half of Razor's health pool, but a hell of a lot of everyone's health pool, so 
Like, that combo, just with two spells, yeah. is absolutely freaking ridiculous. Team Kazakhstan have to make sure that their mech is on point. Once the Sonic Wave is dropped, they have to mech up the, minute, the second after that lands, just to try to avoid getting 100 to 0 But for Team Russia, they're not done. They're just going to keep up the aggression because they still have the Aegis. They also have grabbed an Alpha Wolf. So a little bit extra damage here because, you know, Undershock doesn't have a DD rune, so he's going to need some way <laughs> to kind of mitigate that. Tower may be denied, that's the best case scenario obviously for Team KZ here, but I don't really know if they want to get that close. Maze is going to close in, look for the curse, they drop a Risen Afterlife, doing quite a bit of damage actually. With the Purification, he's just going to work down this tower, destroyed by the Quap. That's going to be a clean in and out there for Team Russia, they can now go to the top lane where still all the towers are alive. Yeah, Huskar a lot more susceptible than to magic damage than he used to be, but still, yeah, at this point with an Omni Knight behind him as farmed as he is, he'll be just fine. and. They're going to start to really choke out the Radiant side from the map. SB has not been able to farm on his Shadow Fiend for a couple of minutes now. And we'll find a little bit bot lane, but it's not going to be nearly enough to garner a response from Team Russia, especially considering there's no Tier 1 there. So they'll just eliminate this final Tier 1 from the game uh, as their wave pushes uh, top. They are going to have to attend to that, but no backdoor pr protection, of course, it being a Tier 1. and They'll actually just convene around the tower and bring it down without contest. Easy tower, probably uh, easy push for a tier 2. The creep wave is going to be slowly going towards the radiant side, but no, they're going to smoke up instead. I like this. If you're Team Kazakhstan, you're thinking, oh, okay, we should go down towards the bottom lane, try to split push because the push is coming up towards top, but the push is not going up towards top. It's going into their faces, and oh, well, there's no one to find right now, but they're heading in the right direction at a pretty good angle. Afterlife's not super healthy, but he still has about a minute left on Aegis, and they may just intercept the Winter Wyvern. Getting rid of that oh, embrace is going to be huge. Amazing. Yeah, now caught by screen. There's a shard. Snowball Wars Punch. Already amazing. Down three-fourths of his HP, and is going to get picked off by Unshock. Beyond godlike speed for him. Stallcat's invis. So luckily for him, he's going to scout out everyone else. They're going to blind Sonic Wave, because why not? It doesn't really cost <laughs> you anything. Stallcat still sticking around, but he did get enough intel so that everyone else can escape. So big smoke up for just the Winter Wyvern. It's a win for Team Russia, but not the win that they were exactly looking for. Yeah, no, this is fine for uh, mm -hmm. Kazakhstan. This is exactly what they need to do. They need to buy space and buy time for their cores to continue to farm. Uh, they need to only lose uh, invaluable heroes uh, like the Winter Wyvern there. So they do pick up the full Sand on the SP that will have an SNY soon, and he'll be in somewhat fighting shape with the mech and the SNY. Mantis is probably the target who's most safe actually in vision in lanes right now, uh, considering that he is a Razor with 1600 HP. Uh, so I don't really mind this if I'm Kazakhstan right now, and I think they can continue uh, to play this game until all of their outer tier structures are taken out. The problem is that they're not exactly taking any structures of their own, so while they are playing this game, they are getting a little bit more farm on their cores, yes, but their supports are falling very far behind. There's nowhere comparable to this Omni who now has a 4 staff. Metrum has already a 4 staff. And uh, what does this Tusk have? Drums, phase boots with 1600 gold in the bank, Blink Dagger probably, the next pick up for screen. They're just going to go up the high ground, so now they don't really have any other options. Afterlife's going to lose his Aegis, which does kind of suck for the timing of this push, but still, they're not really fearing anything as long as they can keep Repel up, which is, by the way, maxed out. Afterlife is where he should really not be dying, at least not super easily. Axmo needs to be there with the Repel with the GA. Just in case, Afterlife is going to dive right in towards Mantis. Pick a fight. Here comes Requiem, but it immediately gets silenced out. He's going to actually die, the Huskar. They can't get the ultimate off. Finally, in the back line, Stallcat is going to get onto Axmo. That's why there was no Guardian Angel. He's going to pop the GA now. Undershock is going 1v3 right now, but he's just not taking enough damage. Finally, the multicast comes through. They lose the Huskar and the Queen of Pain, and now they'll have to back off. Splinter Blast will not kill off screen. Good heal there from Axmo. Now he's going to have to try to run away. Shards are there. SP has to be very careful because here comes the retaliation. Snowball in. He's going to get embraced. There's no magical damage here. Purify is available now, but it's not in time. That was a great hookshot initiation there from the Clockwork. Getting onto the Omni Knight, making sure that the Huskar dies because if there's GA, Huskar does not die. He keeps on swinging. I feel like maybe Axmo had some issues in that fight um, in terms of ping, but I don't want to blame anything on it on the Omni Knight, but... Feels like he was, yeah, really late on the GA there. Even at the end when they re-engaged on the Shadow Fiend, uh, he did have Purify in time to get it off. Had a Repel on himself, so maybe uh, that confused him a bit. He wasn't able to cast it off, but Screen was right on top of the Shadow Fiend, and he was able to cast that Purify and probably kill him off under the Cold Embrace. But uh, either way, yeah, the Huskar dies way too early there uh, for them to have a good engagement, and the Requiem connects on the Queen of Pain, so despite her being 
uh, behind enemy lines there. She had already used her combo and her right click just wasn't enough with the damage reduction to bring anyone down further. And that being said, Team Russia still have a hell of a lot of gold to work with and they are still in an advantageous position at this stage. There's a Linket Sphere now up on Queen of Pain, so uh, mostly with the intent of blocking the Winter's Curse, although it does block Fire Blast, Ignite, uh, you know, these other tools as well. But the double four staff is going to be a lot harder for Razor to get a lot of damage stolen, plus Huskar is very, very close to what I assume is going to be a Heaven's Halberd, so the right-click physical damage of Team Kazakhstan, though in theory very high, is not guaranteed to land. They are going to go for Diffusal Blade actually on this Razor, Kind of a weird sequencing of items. I like the Diffusal mm. Blade on Razor, especially in this game, but like Sanj into Diffusal Blade is it's not exactly an item progression that we see. Yeah, maybe you... Well, I guess they have Repel. So perhaps he was... I mean, most likely going for SNY, but perhaps he was thinking Halberd against the Huskar and then realized, well, they have Repel, so that's kind of useless. So maybe I'll go back for a Diffusal Blade beforehand. Speaking of a Halberd, Oscar going to pick up one for himself, and this is going to really increase his both his damage and his effective HP uh, up against two heroes who want to right-click but are not going to have an MKB anytime soon. I believe you can purge off the disarm if you're Mantis. Yes. He's going to get four staff in by Axmo. I mean, that's kind of a bad idea because here comes the cavalry. Axmo now doesn't have a four staff to use to get out of here. He's going to hit with the curse and immediately drops GA mid-cast, not going to be in time. Yeah, I don't really know what the Omni Knight is doing down there. Not a good place to be, and he's going to get punished. But perhaps it's not going to be completely for free, because Stallcat is being stalked by Invisible Screen. He's going to hookshot into Metrum. This is a trap, however. Metrum's going to force staff out. Screen's going to go in. And now the t the Clockwork's caught in his own cogs, and Shards can't go anywhere. He's going to hit with a full-on Mystic Flare. Okay, careless trade for careless trade. It's all even, but Afterlife, ooh, sees SB. Not quite close enough to get the life break out. Up towards the top lane, in the meantime, Undershock is pushing in, knowing that he doesn't have much to fear since the curse is down. Will not get the tower, unfortunately, for the Queen of Pain, but still, now all tier 2 towers are down. So that in of itself is a small victory for Russia. Yeah, certainly so. Um, feels like they should have established a little bit of more map control earlier on, and perhaps backing off and mentally scathed a little bit from that push bottom lane where they really don't get anything significant done. I mean, the tier three is more or less eliminated from the map, but right now the rack's still standing and this game is still, feels like too easily, uh, it's too easy for this Kazakhstan squad to come back. All things considered, they should be probably a lot more behind than they are. 8K gold lead right now for Team Russia and it's mostly uh, because of the Omni Knight being as far ahead as he is. Guardian Grease now maybe going to go for a pipe or glimmer cape. Uh, I actually would not mind the pipe here. I mean, there's not a ton of magic damage from KZ, but you'll be able to get almost full value of that barrier pretty much no matter what. But more likely than not, it's just going to be glimmer to be that uh, single target. I'm going to bail you out every single time. Play. They're just going to chill and wait for Roshan. And for Team Kazakhstan, they probably know that this is going on. Whether or not they could actually act on this is a different question entirely. Hookshot's going to land to Metrum, but again, Cog's not going to do a ton up against the four staff. Metrum's going to force down to the south, cuss him on a stall cat, start to earn up. Plotsfield's going to chunk him down. He has help from the shards. There's a purge. Metrum's going to get hit with the Guardian Greaves, purified as well. Now turns around for a seal. So the right click damage is there as Axmo misses his Guardian Angel. Now Mantis, with a lot of damage still stolen, is going to keep on fighting, but here comes the snowball. It's screen, going to try to lock down Mantis. He'll get purified and he will fall in the meantime in the main fight. It's a Cogs trapping Afterlife, but he's just not taking enough damage from Stalkat at this point. He's going to eventually fall, but Undershock, he's going to charge forward looking for a little more. He's kind of low on mana, but SB is low on support, and he's going to get dropped. It's a triple kill for Undershock. It's a two for five trade in favor of Team Russia, and they can go down bottom line, try to force some buybacks. I think that's probably the only option they have. Again, it's kind of weird to see Axmo dropping these plays, but in this particular scenario, it seems like it didn't matter. Yeah, it seems a little odd that SB runs back there. I mean, they have tons of chase with that 1300 range blink, so uh, don't feel like he's able to get out. And if he right clicks into the Huskar, they kill him off earlier, and the clockwork is still up, uh, up with, uh, at the very least, a rocket flare to contribute there. So feels like that would have helped them a little bit. But yeah, either way, Team Rush are really able to draw out these engagements pretty well. They're going to try and find something on the way out, does the Radiant side. To justify their buybacks, but the Sonic Wave turn from Undershock is just going to eliminate Lucky from the map. And already expending two buybacks on your course, 
on the SF and the Razor is going to be very detrimental to their item progression now and, and really any chance they had of coming back into relevance. Well, the pure damage nukes are kind of maxed out here for the Team Russia side. Now that they have their heroes respawn, namely this Huskar, they'll just slide right into the Roche Pit and maybe scouted, yes, but Clockwork wants to initiate on this. It's just going to be him with the Death Wish. I don't think that's a good idea. However, it is a small timing where Axmo does not have Guardian Angel. I don't know why he's messing with this cliff side. He's trying to force that up to the high ground, I think, for some reason. I don't really know if there's any benefit to that. But uh, Vero Shan Slobicelli dropping. He's going to be in between Stallcat and the Roche. So Axmo kind of playing that uh, boxing out role. Hookshot in. He's going to catch Afterlife. Huskar grabs the Aegis, however, and Stallcat's now going to fall. He forced Aps up to the high ground, he does, but Axmo cannot, but it's a little bit too late. I think for Team Kazakhstan, they kind of have to make that play, but yeah. it's not going to work out. Yeah, Valiant attempt by Stalkat. Um, doesn't feel like they're in an, any worse of a position than they would have been if he doesn't make that play, and perhaps uh, if they're able to deny out the Aegis, they continue to delay out this game to try and find some farm on to SB, but uh, yeah, certainly uh, still going to be a very grim for the Radiant side at this point, and that bottom engagement is going to do a lot of damage to their ability to come back in this one. They really have no item progression since about, I would say, the 20-minute mark on both the Shadow Fiend and the Ra uh, Razors, who picked up his defusal and hasn't really gotten anything since that. And they both were holding on to money and do not have buyback. So we do see the Razor complete up his S and Y, but still, 2,700 gold on SB. Not buying an item, does not have buyback. We'll see if that has any effect on this next engagement. Well, there's a Guardian Angel here, and as long as Axmel can stick close enough to his allies, yet far enough away from the Wyvern, that will be a backbreaking skill. So Dalkat is going to isolate Afterlife, but Afterlife's going to jump right into the cogs, going after this clockwork. It will not be enough with the flare. They will get the kill after the Sonic Wave. Afterlife now going to torch the Winter Wyvern, now going to get onto Mantis, who's stolen no damage so far. Needs help, but with the DJ and Aura, can't quite run fast enough. He's going to get glimmered out, so it's a little bit more time for him to walk out of there, and he will eventually escape. Thought they had him for sure. Seems like they weren't expecting a glimmer. They'll try to snipe him with Screen's Charge. That's not going to fly. Now Screen's in a little bit of trouble. Garden Angel's going to fly. His Undershot's going to dive right in. Has no more Sonic Wave. SB is going to walk in with a Shadow Blade, looking for a Requiem. We'll decide against it, as Rax has already been taken. Again, kind of a, uh, a loose Guardian Angel there, but again, it doesn't really matter for Team Russia. Mm. They can still go for more, having the Aegis on the Huskar. They're actually kind of low on mana, which is kind of weird, but uh, hey, I'm pretty sure they'll have Guardian Greaves soon enough. And there's no real response here for Team Godstown. They're going to try to snipe off Afterlife. He's going to get four staffed out. Glimmered as well. Again, four staffed out. He's still alive. In fact, he's going to pop the armlet. Now turn around towards Lucky. The Requiem is going to do quite a bit of damage, but he's now going to hit with the Snowball SB. Screen does not have any true sight, so he can't get that kill. Afterlife still surviving. They just can't hit him enough right now. He has so much evasion. He's going to jump straight towards Mantis. He's going to hit with the Winter's Curse. There's no armlet toggling. Sonic Wave through. He's going to drop SB super low. Blink forward, Scream. SB should fall to Undershock, and he will. Stallcat back in the fight, but now Afterlife, he's back in the fight as well with another life break. Can't find a target, and he will be forced to back out of here. Axmo now with another Guardian Greaves up. We'll start repelling up Afterlife. This is round two for the Huskar, and I don't know if K KZ can actually kill him off again. They struggled so much to kill him off for just one time. They don't even have a hook shot, nor a Winter's Curse, and Afterlife, he doesn't really care about these tier fours. He can jump in at a moment's notice. Splinter Blast, Star and Chip under shock down. They have to focus down the Queen of Pain first, but the Purify, she's pretty darn healthy now. Lucky gets silenced out of his Fire Blast cast. Jump in towards Mantis. Afterlife cannot be stopped, though. He's losing a lot of damage. He needs to get out of here. Like right now, Razor is packing some serious heat. Under shock's gonna blink out. Afterlife gets forced out. They're all gonna make their clean retreats. No Rax is richer. They get a tier 3. Stallcat chasing forward, looking for a hook shot into someone, but everyone gets Guardian Greaves up, so there's no more viable kills here. It looks like Team Russia have a chance now to back off, reset. And then go in again. Yeah, the Guardian Angel was a bit underwhelming, but some really good positioning overall from Axmo. He watched uh, his Undershot Queen of Pain jump in to solo up that Shadow Fiend as he got low and was able to peel him up from the low ground. So that allows Undershot to continue to stand strong in the fight. And they get quite a bit of damage done on the Range Racks. As you mentioned, not able to bring down a structure mid lane, but uh, they can just rinse and repeat, wait for this next Aegis to come up, and then probably end out this one. Yeah, there's so much evasion on the Huskar, and with Lincoln Sphere effects, now actually travels on Undershock. I don't think this is the right item. Uh, I mean, travels are good, but there's really no need to have that mobility when you're a Rax ahead at this stage. Just go for survivability, like a BKB, even though it won't be like the best item in this game, will help Undershock just go in and not really care about anything. That, that type of item. 
would have been a lot better than travels but uh, either way he's packing the gem he's gonna walk right into amazing who has the curse screen's gonna blink forward they're going to go for stall cap they don't know that the shadow fiend is invis and approaching fast they're gonna go for screen hit with the winter's curse he needs to get the snowball off it looks like they'll bring him down before any help arrives now to afterlife who's losing a lot of damage from mantis is gonna need help he jumps away from it sonic wave onto three and finally a good guardian angel coming out from axmo however there is a purge stick afterlife he's gonna take a hell of a lot of damage but he's still surviving even after sitting right under a requiem he's still alive purified up and he finally will fall mantis has stolen 80 for damage axmo four staff out of that fight here comes the ogre magi from the south but he doesn't have any mana so we can't really do that much axmo is going to blink into the trees four staff out metrum do they know that the omnite is here it seems like they don't don't move axmo their vision is based on movement it's going to be a three for two huskar however is going to buy back this is not a necessary buyback this is a i'm tired of playing this game buyback and i want yeah. to end it right now and i'm pretty sure this is going to work out well, they know the Shadow Fiend doesn't have buyback as well, so it is the GG push, as you mentioned, and, and they're going to just throw up Undershock on the high ground already. He's got a Sonic Wave at the ready to jump for Chiva's Guard. Sonic Wave's there onto Mantis, getting low, but he should be fine with that unstable concurrent, keeping Undershock at bay. Jump forward from the Omni Knight, body blocking up. Lucky they get the Mystic Flare and the Purification off. They'll bring down the Ogre Magic. Does have buyback, will expend it. They're going to try and retreat out. They are pretty low in mana on the Omni Knight. 20 seconds on the Greaves still. And they will start to put some punishment into the mid lane. Afterlife has been there the entire time bringing down the racks. And they'll get that lane. They probably need to evacuate at this point. Shadow Fiend responding in four seconds. And they do reset. Jump out here. And they will jump forward with the Waller's Punch, though. Back into Lucky. This is a dieback for the Ogre Magi. And maybe this is a window for them to jump back into this engagement. Lincoln Sphere going to be popped by the Static Link. Mantis trying to back off on the back lines. Afterlife going to jump in onto the Shadow Fiend. He'll Shadow Blade up. Glimmer Cape on the Wyvern as well. Afterlife a little bit isolated now. Hookshot trying to keep the rest of the Dire Side at bay. Big Winter's Curse onto three. No follow up really yet. The Purification going to keep the Omni Knight alive. Snowball, three men inside it. Going to jump forward. Going to find the Shadow Fiend. Two cores on the sidelines. No buyback. Ogre Magi as well. And looking like we're encroaching upon GG territory. Four down on the sidelines. Double kill for screen. And they're blinking in towards the fountain. Rushing Dota at its finest. It's going to jump forward. Fountain dive. Afterlife. Ghost Scepter's up. The snowball going to keep him safe. Undershot. Ghost Scepter's as well. And they will be able to wow. blink out. Clockwork instantly buys back. Does not have a hook shot. Can't find anyone. And that's going to be a little bit tilt <laughs> for Kazakhstan. I'm not, I'm not surprised they dive the fountain there. I'm surprised that only the Huskar dies. <laughs> Like, that was a Tusk involved and a Skyrath Mage. They should be the ones dying, but no. Of all heroes, it's the Huskar to drop. Who has a Ghost Scepter and like a million percent evasion. Easy. 25, 25. Easy kill for the Fountain, I think. Like a 60% to hit. So 40% evasion, I think, for Huskar. With insane armor and ethereal form. I mean, there's no razor, there's no shadow fiends, so there's a lot of time for them to jump in and blow up the Ogre Magi. Amazing. He's gonna try to fly into his own base. He'll get in there. Stallcat, however, may not. He's gonna get embraced. There's no mana for Mystic Flare, but they don't even need it. Undershock's running dry at this stage. He's gonna again go into the fountain, try to go scepter out. He's losing damage to Mantis, but he has another blink, so he's not really gonna die here. There's no chance of that. He's gonna get four stapped in by Axmo. No, that was four stapped in by Metrum, actually. He's trying to kill off each other. Team Kazakhstan, they're fighting to the bitter end, but the end is just 300 HP away. And it is going to be Team Russia after a disastrous laning stage to bring it back and claim victory in this game one. Clowny ending, but a very, very disciplined play all around from Russia. They did not tilt early on. Uh, they didn't get much on their Huskar. They continued to pressure mid lane and find that trade. And... I guess they just weren't too worried about Mantis's Razor. They were able to dodge him up early enough, often enough, uh, so that they were able to get strong enough on their cores to fight up against him. And SB being as behind as he was uh, really did secure the victory. Now, Undershock with an amazing performance on Queen of Pain, handling the mm -hmm. Shadow Fiend with a little bit of help granted, but uh, really was the engine so that Russia can make their comeback. They're going to get one point off of this one, so already sitting pretty. Kazakhstan... Well, they have another game. This is the best of two, so they're going to be looking for one point of their own. But after this performance, it's going to be pretty hard for them to uh, keep it all together. Guys, I'm Mike Loris. I've been joined by MRP, and we'll both be right back for Game 2 between Team Russia and Team Kazakhstan. Don't go anywhere.